Hey guys, welcome back. Today we got a quick and easy upgrade for your N55 engine. For any of you guys that are going big turbo, this is a must. This is a 3.5 bar T-map sensor. I'm going to show you guys how to not only how to install it, but also how to program the DME to make sense of the signal. Stick around. Okay guys, so the N20 T-map sensor, basically the reason you would want to upgrade to this when you have a larger turbo going in is because this has a wider operating range than the map sensor that came stock on the n55 engines and uh, that one if i'm not mistaken is a three bar sensor uh, and this one here is a 3.5 bar sensor so that additional range allows the tuner to be able to tune pat beyond uh, what the factory sensor can read now you can go ahead and install this on a stock turbo it's not going to give you any more power it's not going to make any difference whatsoever um, all, you know, as long as it's installed correctly, uh, it's really just throwing money out the window, to be honest. The only people that actually need this are people that are, again, putting a bigger turbo on their car. I'm doing that in the next few months. I already have the turbo. It's sitting beautiful in my closet. So <laughs> I'm very excited, but it's just very cold right now to be laying on a concrete floor. So it's not going to happen right now. But anyway, this is one of those things that you, that I need to do. First things first is which map sensor is it that we were upgrading i know that's a question that a lot of people often ask and we're going to be replacing the one that's in front of the throttle body do not mess with the one in the intake manifold that one stays exactly how it is uh, we are upgrading this one down here and this is the connector that we're going to be doing the rewire on um, you can depending on the on the charge pipe design that you have depending on the brand sometimes the mounting bolts are accessible sometimes they're a pain in the butt mine happens to be a pain in the butt so i find it a lot easier that if i ever need to get that sensor out or whatever i just remove the entire charge pipe and i do it on the bench rather than on the car so let's do that now okay so now that we have the charge pipe out, out of the car a lot easier to work on this so uh, we're going to go ahead and swap out sensors okay now you guys can see original 3.5 Sensor themselves are pretty similar. I mean, similar design and whatnot, same diameter. But you notice that the connectors are different. This is a connector for the early model M55s. This one is not. So I'm gonna have to test to make sure that thing can even go into here. Yeah, I think we're gonna be good. All right, so let's just go ahead and slap this on there and we'll worry about wiring in a second. One thing that I always like to do whenever installing new O-rings just go ahead and give them a, a, a little film of oil on them just so they make a good seal against it. So I've got some my fresh engine oil. It doesn't need much, just, just enough to coat it, that's all. Now it is tricky to get these new O-rings in place, so that's part of the reason why you also put uh, some oil on them. So once you get it down flush, you just have to start wiggling slowly. It'll go in there. It's just a very tight fit. That's intentional. There we go. Solid in there. Okay, now let's go in the car and rewire that connector. Actually guys, before I show you how to do the rewire, let me show you why you have to do the rewire. So this is the original sensor, right? Uh, so you have pins one, two, three, four, going towards my left, one, two, three, four. And you see right in front of one, there's this, there's this notch right there. That's for the connector to kind of guide it in and you don't, so you don't end up bending all the pins. Now, this is the original, and then look at the N20. That still pins one, two, three, four going in that direction. However, look at where the notch is. It's on this side in front of four. 
So the connector on the car will still go in there, but you have to rotate it 180 degrees and then it slips right in. But by doing that, the function of these pins on the sensor themselves do not change between these sensors. So, you, so that's why you have to take the pins and reverse them. So that way all the pins go to their intended function pin. So now, now you understand what's going on there. Let me go ahead and show you how to do it. Okay, guys, here you go. I'm going to try my best to not block my, with my big hands, but it's eh, eh, no promises. <laughs> All right, so if you look at the, the, the original connector, now mind you, this is an early N55, so it has the uh, TMAP type A connector. If you ever had a JB4, you would know what the difference is between an A and B. This is an A, um, and it shares the same connector as like the, the E90 bo body style. So look at the side that has this notch which is what the the old sensor actually secured itself onto uh there's a lid right here and we're gonna go ahead and just pry that up with a small flathead you can go in from either direction and just go slowly oh well, don't, don't break it like i just did good job <laughs> nice all right hold on sorry now i'm blocking it but now i need, I need to see what i'm doing here we go Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, not a flathead. Let's try a pin. Go in from the side right along this edge. There you go. And then push it up. There we go. All right. Maybe I should have done that first. All right. So, I ended up cracking it. But if you see there, there's a lip on the lid that snaps into the connector here. So, what I did is I got this, uh, this straight pick and I got under it. And I just, by pushing it forward, it just lifted itself out of the way. So, Let's now push this up. Oh man, this thing is so brittle. Yeah, I may have to get a new connector. <laughs> Anywho, so now that we have this out, oh, good job. All right, well, let me just snap it off. So the way that I'm going to do it now is actually right where that where that lip was. These are little uh, like little clips that hold each pin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on it and pull the wire, and that's going to release the pin. Move on to the to the up the, the side where I want to put that pin. Do the same and just reverse them. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the outboard ones. So let's take one off. I should be able to use a little flathead on this. There you go. So you push down on the right here on the on the big band side uh, where, the, where the cover was. Let's go ahead and push down on that and it's going to release the clip that's on the face against here. So you can just pull it out. There you go. We got one out and then this one here, because it's on the outboard to, to the top, I'm going to put it at the bottom here. So that's the next one I'm going to release. They have actual pin, deep pinning tools. I don't have any. I don't do this often enough to merit the cost. They're cheap, but again, I barely do this. There we go. All right, so there's the other pin out. So now, here's the fun part. Now we're gonna take the first one and rotate it. There you go. So now, just make sure that it's pointing in the right way. There it goes. There it goes. And just here to snap. There. It's very, obviously they're tiny, so. This one. There we go. All right, so the outboards are done. Now we just got to do the two centers. And it's the same method. Hey, guys, so I was looking at this, and I thought about replacing this connector but honestly like the this little cover that broke off here that goes here it'll still snap in place number one and number two this happened after the rubber seal against the connector so honestly i don't have a concern for any any moisture getting in here because this is below the the the, the, the what you call it the rubber seal so i think we're good I'm still, gonna, I'm still gonna go ahead and put the cover on it though so let's do that real quick line it up And there it is. 
you know, it's not something that sees movement or heat or anything. So it's just going to stay in there, really. Uh, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and bring the charge pipe back in. Okay, guys, now that we're done under the hood, now we need to get into the car and let the MHD suite know that we went ahead and upgraded the TMAP sensor. Because the stock sensor and the N20 sensor have different operating ranges, the signal is going to be slightly off going to the DME. And that, that's why you have to let the MHD know because the MHD then it's going to scale that signal accordingly so that you don't have a check engine light going on or anything. Let me show you that now. Okay guys, I was about to get into MHD and the moment I gave the ignition power, check engine light popped on as expected, but I got a drivetrain malfunction. And I think that's because it picked up that, the, that there's a new sensor in there that it doesn't know, doesn't, that it doesn't recognize. So let me go ahead and show you guys on the screen how to go ahead and set it up on MHD. And let's hope that it takes care of this. Okay, OBD2 dongle is in and we're connected to it. We're gonna open the MHD suite and we're gonna check for codes real quick. And these are the codes that came up from replacing the sensor. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the codes now. I just wanna rule out if these sensors were there before or not. Okay, well, the same codes are back, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and reflash the tune. Right now I'm using a cookie cutter uh, MHD off the shelf tune. Currently on the stage two plus. I have a Dave Shop custom tune as well. It's just that right now with the cold weather and my short commute, uh, E50 is not happy with cold temps. So I'm running, I took it down to E30 and I'm running this one for now. Um, anyway, you scroll down to the bottom of the options here. And there it is, 3.5 bar. That's our N20 sensor. And I'm also realizing that I never fixed up the my coils, which I have B58 coils, and my coolant target should be sport. E. Oops. <laughs> well, all right, we're ready. Let's go ahead and flash this now, and and hope for the best. So guys, there you have it. That's how you upgrade the TMAP sensor on an F10 N55. And the same goes for all the E9X body styles that have the N55. It's the same exact procedure for you guys. Um, with that said, just, I just wanna remind you that this is of no benefit to anybody that's running stock turbo. This is only for people that are going to be, um, what you call it, upgrading the turbo to a bigger turbo. And, you know, cause that's what's gonna take it beyond the, the, the range that the factory sensor can read. So that's why you do this. I'm doing it in preparation for my big turbo that's just itching to get installed, but I gotta hold the horses, man. Like, I, got, I wanna go ahead and do it right. I'm gonna go ahead and do a, a transmission service. And, on, and in addition, while I'm in there, I'm actually gonna do, uh, I'm gonna replace all the, the, the shift solenoids that are in there, get some nice fresh ones from ZF. And I'm also gonna be doing rod bearings on the engine itself. It's got, a, it's got almost 126,000 miles. I have no rod knock. I have, and you know, I typically change the oil every 3,000 miles at most. Um, but again, I don't know how the previous owner did it. And so with adding the big turbo and, and the torque that comes along with that, I don't want to take the chance. So we're going to be doing that. We got some cool projects coming up for you guys uh, and also more projects for the Jetta. 
thank you guys so much and if you learned anything in this video if you liked it please give me a like consider subscribing and i got more coming your way thank you have a good weekend